Hey guys, welcome to the shop. A lot of interesting work in my opinion to do in this video. We've got ball joints to do and universal joints. Two really common failure items. You won't have to do them maybe on an axle of this make, but almost every vehicle on the planet has both of these components in it and you may find yourself needing to replace them. So I'll show you how I do it. And um, maybe we'll get, if we get lucky, we'll get this axle back together and get it started going up under the old Chevy pickup truck. We'll see. So let's get some air pressure built up. Turn the phase converter on. Underneath the canopy that I built out here over the compressor, I put some lights. So let me show you that. I think uh, it's awesome. Yeah. So I used the switch that was by this door, tied in two of the exact same LED lights that I use inside of the shop. So now I can see out here really well, which is nice because it was pretty dark out under this cover, even in the daytime. So that made a huge difference. I'll show you a little better. So there's the two LED panels, the two foot by two foot, 42 watt. I know people will ask, so I picked them up from Amazon. And they're, the, like I said, same ones that I had in the shop, perfectly suited for a damp location. At least that's what it says on the packaging. And I've had no problems with these. They've probably been installed for three weeks, maybe a month. And put out a ton of good light out here. It's, you can work out here very easily in the dark now with just these two panels. So they got a pretty heavy undercoating on this axle. Just trying to knock this clip loose a bit so we don't break the ends off of our snap ring pliers. There we go. All this will come with a new kit so we're not saving any of this stuff. So I'm just cleaning off all the rust scale and stuff so these press out as easy as possible. In my experience, these are pressed in to this knuckle pretty tight. And it's much easier with a ball joint press. You can do it with a hammer, you can do it with a regular press, but you risk bending the knuckle. I've seen that done. So let's uh, get the top nut and the bottom nut off and then uh, we'll get the knuckle off and then start replacing the joints. So the cotter pins and the tops of these nuts are almost always frozen and hard to get out. But if you're replacing the ball joint anyway, and you're doing this for a customer job, you don't want to spend 30 minutes, 40 minutes trying to get a cotter pin out. All this stuff's getting replaced. Take the torch, blow it off, cut off wheel, angle grinder. I mean, that's really, we don't care if we save this nut and pin. We want to get this out so we can replace them. So if you're doing it by the job and getting paid a fixed amount, you know, the fastest way sometimes is the best way.
little heat makes all the difference. So the upper and the lower ball joints are really tapered pins, and there's matching tapers inside of both of these uh, or both these lugs on the axle. And imagine how accurate the spacing would need to be and your positioning of the ball joints to get both of those tapers to seat properly and uh, lock into the actual axle housing. It'd be almost impossible. So what they did is you have a stationary taper at the bottom of this and then you have an adjustable sleeve in the top that ensures that both of these ball joints are nice and tight uh, in the axle housing. I'll show you the, uh, the adjustable sleeve. We gotta put a new one in anyway, but I'll show you how it is right now. So it takes a special tool to get this sleeve out. I just made one, just a couple of lugs. And all it does is screw down in there and you can see that it hopefully has a split in it there. And as you screw it down, it's a tapered hole, an NPT basically. And as you screw it down, it gets tighter and tighter and locks onto the taper of the uh, upper ball joint. an inchworm. So in my opinion, a ball joint press is probably the best way to remove these ball joints without damaging the actual knuckle itself. If you try to press this in a regular shop press, you put a lot of force on the actual knuckle itself that, that really it's not made to withstand. So you can damage them that way. Now, I've had this not very long actually. I got it for a, uh, one other job and it worked perfectly fine. I got it from Harbor Freight, just so it's just a budget budget press, but all it is is a large drop-forged C-clamp. 
that's that's got a lot of mass to it and a different pipes and uh, adapters to configure to whatever joints you need to press out so it's nothing special other than a really heavy duty C clamp so we'll push out the bottom one first and then we'll remove the top one These are also good. Yep, good and clean. Yeah, these are good. So we've got our seats all cleaned up because we want to make sure that these seat good and solid. And see what we got here. We'll put the top end first. That is the bottom. And there is the top with the grease fitting. And we'll point that grease fitting towards the back of the truck, not completely towards the back, but really. According to the instructions, that's really the only way you can access it and it not uh, be obstructed by parts on the truck. So I'm going to lube up these ball joints just a little, the way they slide in maybe a little easier than they would otherwise. Just a little blue molly. Spacer. Um, can you screw that into the bottom there, Kane? Yep. That's good. Alright, so now I can run this in and press on this top one. Tighten it up. Yeah, right there. All right. So each one of these ball joints get a dust seal. A grease seal and according to the directions you got to put the little cutout on these away from the direction of the wheel. And 
and they pop on there pretty tight. Squeaky. Hmm? Got her hanging out. This is Pippi, our green cheek conure. I've showed him before, but uh, not uh, not that often. He's out in the shop hanging out, supervising. What's going on, Pippi? Is it Pippi? Hmm? You doing okay? Does that tell you how hard you're pulling? 70 foot-pounds is what it calls for and to get started. Should be good. So I got to change this U joint. Just got basically a factory replacement spicer joint here. So we got a. This is an internal clipped joint. So we need to pop off these clips and then uh, try to get this out of here. So on occasion these can be really stubborn and don't like to come out. I don't like to use like the hydraulic press for these because it's so easy to bend these ears and cause yourself problems. I always find they come out easier with just a hammer just to knock them out. But you can also cut them out as well. A zip wheel with an ankle grinder or a torch. But I'm going to try first just, just to hammer it out. So let that end down. We're just up a little bit. We want it to sit flat on down a little bit. Right there. We want that to sit flat so we can try to drive that uh, end down through the uh, piece of pipe there.
Definitely in bad shape. So anytime you pull the drive shaft apart or an axle, make sure to put it back in its original alignment. I didn't show me marking this, but I marked both both parts of this. That way they go back in the same position that they were. That way if there was a balancing uh, job done on this, it'll at least be close to, to the way it was originally. Up just a little. Right up. And about right there. So before I put this U-joint back together, I just, with a round file, remove any raised burrs that I uh, caused in the disassembly. A lot of times you, when you hit the joint all the way through, it'll ding up the inside. And maybe put just the slightest taper, knock off the sharp edge, that way they start good and easy. So in my opinion, the reassembly of the U-joint is a lot easier than the disassembly. Although there are things to watch out for, like those little neat bearings in the cap that like to fall and get down in the end of the cap and then cause, cause you not to be able to put the joint together and damage the U-joint. I think probably everybody who's put more than a handful of these in has experienced that. I know that I have, but I put them together in a way that they're somewhat supported, the needles are, by the center section of the actual joint itself and somewhat strategically drive the caps in. I mean, it's the only way that I've found that keeps that little random needle from falling down into the end of the cap and causing you all kinds of problems. <laughs> that shot, that shot way over there, totally disappeared. I heard it. I mean, it shot straight this way. Yeah, it sounded to me like it hit a rag or something. Check on that. Hit something metal, but then it sounded like a 
I didn't hear it bounce on the floor or anything. What I need is more stuff on this bench. Mm. There it is. But ta da! Laying on that glove. There we go. U joint replaced. It'll last a long time. So here's a piece of advice on universal joints that I was given a long time ago and it's never let me down. And that is if you have to pull a drive shaft or anything to replace a universal and that shaft has more than one universal joint in it, replace them all. Because they're very likely to have done the same amount of work and one's not going to be far behind the other. And they don't have to feel bad to be very close to uh, on their way out and it would really not be good to have to pull that shaft again in six months to replace the one that you tried to save $35 on. Now, if you don't have $35, I get it. I've been there. But if you can afford to change them, change them all, because otherwise you'll be back there again soon to replace that one you didn't. So we're in the short rows now. This thing's definitely coming back together. I know a lot of people think fondly of these old trucks. A lot of families were built, you know, by working with these old trucks. And I would even argue a lot of families were started in these old trucks. I'm not saying mine was. But I'm not saying it wasn't either. You know what I'm saying? So me and my son, wire wheeled and spray painted these brake covers not to make them look good just to keep them from getting so rusty so fast they were starting to get pretty pretty bad Let's see is that the right right there there we go you don't see these under the truck anyway So the wheel bearings are completely clean, flushed, no grease left in those. We need to pack those before we reinstall them. There's a couple different, well, there's a million ways you could get away with this. But this is a bearing packing tool. You just screw this together, pump grease into this grease fitting, and wait till it comes out on the outside. I don't care much for these. Usually I'll just do it by hand, but we'll, we'll try one just for fun. That's about as good as it's gonna do. Just gonna shoot out pretty much on one side. That's why I really don't like these things. And then when you're done, you either gotta bag this thing or clean it up. Yeah. <laughs> 
Mm -hmm. I'm just drive it straight down, try to hit the hammer good and flat, just to hit it on this side. Hit it again there. Slightly all the way around. There you go. Okay. Yeah, I did it. <laughs> did a good job. first retaining ring with a pin out. I don't know how many times I've seen those pins pushed in and not doing anything. Almost on every truck I've ever worked on. People get kind of aggravated when they're trying to set the bearing tension. <laughs> I understand why. But. be held. So when these go together you need to make sure that that back bearing is seated and all the way back in because it is easy to get it kind of cockeyed and you can still get stuff together and it not be seated all the way in. I've done it before and when I tighten these bearings up I tighten them up tighter than what I'd run them just to make sure that everything is seated. I would not run them that tight. And then just back off just a little bit. And run it and see how it does. That's the way I do it. lucky on that one lined up the first time just use a punch on the bottom in one of the holes and now the lock nut to keep everything from backing off Just a little grease in these splines. They'll just help keep everything moving. You don't pack your hubs full of grease. A little bit's fine, but you don't want to put much in them. It'll just stop them from working.
push the axle forward and put your keeper on. snap ring in and the rest of the hub together. Bada boom, bada bang, it's done. So that feels pretty good. And when we get this axle under the truck, we'll drive it, check these, make sure that they're not getting hot. Now, more grease does not equal more better when it comes to wheel bearings. That grease has to be able to get out of the way of those rolling bearings or else it'll just continuously turn that grease around inside of the hub. It will result in a bunch of heat and these will get so hot they'll start smoking. I've seen them. I've done it. So, you know, just be careful. Don't put too much. As long as you pack your bearings good when you put them in and put a little bit extra in the hub, that's going to be enough. So this axle is pretty much done. We did a heavy service on this. The teardown and cleanup takes the most time, but uh, going back together went really smooth and I don't see the, I don't see anything that's gonna be problematic with this axle other than the fact that it did have some water in it and I did not pull out the ring and pinion for reasons. Although I think everything's perfectly fine there, we'll see. So I filled this gearbox with a Coastal 7590 which is just a cheap gear oil that I had sitting around because I'm gonna run this thing for a while under the truck and then uh, drain it one more time just to make sure we got everything, all the debris out of this thing. So for the lubricants other than the gearbox, which I just mentioned, in our reciprocating parts like ball joints, universals, and tie rod ends, we use the Valvoline Palladium high moly content grease. And in our wheel bearings, we use the Mystic JT6, which I've always liked that stuff. And uh, should be good to go. Hubs are working the way that it should. Nice and smooth, about as serviced as it's going to get. So, all right, guys, that's it this week. Front axle, done. This thing off the list. All I got to do is install it under it. Install it. <laughs> all I got to do is install it. Uninstall the other one and then install this one under the truck. And then I think we'll be 
good to go for the front end anyway. I mean, it's a, there's a ton of work left, but uh, this is a big chunk of it. So thanks for watching. Thanks to my viewers, patrons, subscribers, anybody who's helped us on this project, much appreciated. So that's it. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time. The birds fly south as the light leaves your eyes. Hold on to your dream. Oh, I know you want to scream. Since the day you're born, you're just a flower. Right.